Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Between Friends. I'm Ashley Jones here at Dime and I'm excited to be with you today talking about quilting with your embroidery machine. So I hope those of you out there watching have tried this technique, um, but if you haven't, we're going to be talking about um, pretty much everything to kind of get you started. So, and you certainly can ask me questions and I will um, answer those today as well. And so I love talking about this topic mainly because people think that you can't do such a large project on your embroidery machine. We all know that we are bound by our hoops and the size of our hoops for embroidery machines. So anytime we're trying to stitch something larger than that, it kind of seems um, a little bit of a mystery. Like, how do we do that? How do we stitch larger than our hoop? So I, that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love this topic, because I feel like it gives um, everyone out there a completely unique way of using their embroidery machine. Now, we've been talking about quilting with our embroidery machine for actually quite some time. Um, Eileen wrote a book years ago about quilting with your embroidery machine, so she's been doing it a very long time. But this topic, it continues to be very popular. And I know why. When you finish that quilt 100% on your own, um, and then you quilt it on your embroidery machine, it is such a rewarding feeling. So. If you haven't done it, I urge you to give it a try. Start with something small and maybe move on to something larger. And once you do, maybe you will have a stack of quilts that looks like this. So I love this. This is one of my favorite images. So to me, it's just um, beautiful to see all those quilts stacked up all finished on an embroidery machine. So you can certainly do small projects or large projects. It really just depends on what you want to do. So I see a lot of people joining. So I um, am glad to have every single one of you guys here. And uh, I see we have people watching for uh, from all over. Um, we have our friend Joanne Banco in the house. So hi, Joanne. Um, I see Betty Turner. I see uh, Sandy. Is that our curry, maybe? Um, and so hopefully I didn't uh, um, massacre that name, Sandy. Uh, so I see Sharon Daytona, um, or Dayton, sorry. And then uh, Esther um, joins us quite regularly. Retha Ranke. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and so tell me, I hope that you guys have quilted on your embroidery machine. Maybe you've done a small project that's in the hoop and only requires one hooping. Um, but tell us uh, if you've done quilting with your embroidery machine and what you thought about it. And then certainly if you have questions, make sure you mention them because we're going to go over lots of details today. So I'm actually going to be showing you at the machine how to connect the designs, which is one I think of the uh, most commonly asked questions. Um, and then we have some other tips along the way as well. So I want to start by uh, talking about different designs because designs, you certainly um, have a plethora of choices out there. There's tons of designers that make quilting designs for your embroidery machine. Um, we have some of them here at Dime, but really quilting with your embroidery machine, the goal um, for edge to edge type quilting is to connect those points of two designs so it looks like all over quilting like you see in this image here um, but in fact this is four separate designs and the thing about quilting with your embroidery machine um, is that you have to move the hoop every time you're ready to quilt the next section and lining up those designs seems to be the biggest mystery, but um, I'm definitely going to help you with that today. So, um, and I, I continue, people are still popping in. So glad to have you. I see Sue um, Brown is here from OML Embroidery. Thank you so much for joining, Sue. Always good to see you. Um, we have Kathy Miller here from Virginia and uh, Retha Ranke. She said um, her adult son did a huge um, quilt with my embroidery machine bigger than a king uh, quilt. It looks amazing. So that's impressive, Retha. Um, tell him to share that with us on our Dime Facebook page. We would love to see that. So love seeing everybody's projects. We've got people from Florida, New Orleans in the house, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, Gretchen from Fort Worth. Anne um, was from New Orleans. So thank you so much um, for joining uh, everyone. Okay, so now let's talk about connecting these designs and different types of designs. So quilting uh, with your embroidery 
sorting machine means that we've got to connect those points if we want it to look like that image there on the right. Now notice that red image that you see in the center. That's actually um, one of those designs, but you can see how I've basically just done a digital repeat so that you can see that these designs uh, mimic the look of continuous quilting when they're all put together. And you can see my little animation there is uh, showing those two points connected and those two designs stitching separately. Um, now, uh, that design that you saw there, the flower design, the happy flower, is from um, uh, Eileen's Quilt with an Embroidery Machine book that I'm sure that you guys have heard about in the past. Um, but now this design here, this is also a design that you connect point to point. Um, these designs are from Amelie Scott Designs. I know that you guys are familiar with her if you've heard anything on edge to edge quilting. But the difference between uh, it, that I think is unique about her designs is she actually gives you an A and a B design that have a slight variation in quilting. And you can see when I uh, digitally put those all together um, that it kind of gives a variation in the quilting, which I think is very cool because then it doesn't just look like the same repeat over and over. Um, and then you have options for uh, something like this. Uh, this is what we refer to as a closed design. You can see that this design, as it animates, starts and stops in the same exact point. And that design doesn't have two points to connect. But this design kind of reminds me of pipes for whatever reason, a, a game that I played in the past that's the, the pipes running. But you can see that the copy that I made there, the one red one is one uh, hooping. And then as I copied those and paste them around one another, you can see that it looks like all over quilting. So even though these don't connect point to point, it still looks like it does. It's kind of a, you know, a little bit of an illusion because that design is so random. It goes, you know, in all different types of uh, directions. So, um, and Denise here says that uh, she's a little timid to start edge to edge, but I have a small pile of lap quilts ready to go. Well, Denise, let me tell you, even a lap quilt takes quite a bit of hooping um, with your, um, your embroidery machine. Not sure what size hoop you have, but start even smaller than that. Do like a placemat with using like your five by seven hoop that'll give you the opportunity to connect those designs and then you've got a finished little placemat so you can kind of practice before getting into that large so because really the connecting the designs is a huge part of quilting with your embroidery machine for sure so um, start even smaller than a lap size quilt so we're talking um, you could do a table runner even but a placemat's always great and um, I have a casserole carrier I was actually going to show you um, under the machine, but I'm going to um, talk about the different parts. It really is truly simple to do. Um, and so now let's see just a, a, another couple of designs here. Here's another one that is a closed design, this meandering design. Um, and these closed designs, if you have never quilted with your embroidery machine, guys, I would try something like this first. Connecting the point to point can be a little intimidating, although it's actually quite simple. So if you want to jump into the deep end, don't feel like you have to start here. But if you are super nervous and want to make 100% sure that your first um, attempt is successful, then choose a design that's really random, like a meandering design like this, or those uh, pipes that I called them in the previous one. Those types of designs are so random that if you accidentally put them too close, or if you put them too far apart, or if you accidentally overlap them, no one will ever know. So, um, and here, this is the last type. Now, this type of design does require more uh, forethought because these designs that are nested, they're usually shaped like a diamond and they are evenly spaced and offset throughout your quilt. Now, so that you land every one of those uh, nesting designs in the exact right place, then you would mark the locations on your quilt. So usually drawing a grid on your quilt with the distance between your um, in intersecting parts of your grid um, in relation to your design size can help you with that placement. So, um, and then uh, Julianne Russell says that a placemat for the first sounds uh, great. I totally agree. You want to set yourself up for success um, because then I think that's going to make you definitely want to continue it. But yeah, a placemat, and it can be, like uh, even just a, a scrap of fabric, you know, if you if you sandwich that the size of the placemat. But if you're doing the placemat, 
and you want to practice connecting, don't cheat and charge. Use your largest hoop. Uh, if you're doing a placemat, try a five by seven hoop. That's actually a very good size. It's going to um, allow you to connect those designs, probably depending on how large you make your placemat, you know, at least like six to nine times um, on your uh, your placemat. So that's a good practice. And then you're um, it's easy to manage, too, since it's a since it's a small um, item. So. And then uh, um, we've got uh, Noda, Noda Brat One, looks like. She said she still needs to try uh, edge to edge quilting or quilting on her um, Husqvarna Viking Diamond. I love how she calls it Lady Die. Oh, that makes me now want a Viking Diamond so I can just refer to it as Lady Die. Love that. Um, yes, I do think so. You definitely should try it. It's super easy. And you can do so many things. You can actually do. Um, uh, anything you need quilted fabric for, really. So it doesn't have to be a quilt. If you like to make quilted tote bags and you uh, need a quilted fabric for that, or if you want to make a quilted vest that you wear, um, that's certainly another good option. But so many times, like my machine cover that I use is quilted. So, so many times we use quilted fabric, and this technique can be uh, used to make your own custom quilted fabric as well. So, um, and uh, that, uh, so um, Amy, let's uh, let's see Amy's comment here because this looks like it's going to be a good one. So Amy said, I want to make embroidered Clorox wipe covers. Um, if you have to keep them out, might as well look nice, right? I totally agree, Amy. That's actually a great idea. And I mean, you're only quilting a small piece of fabric. So that, I love that. So yes, I can't wait to see that. So Amy, do that embroidered Clorox wipe cover and share that with us. So I love that idea. Okay, so now let's talk about connecting the design. So um, no matter which type of design that you choose, whether it's closed or a nested design or um, an edge to edge where we're connecting those points, it's a really good idea to print a template that's going to help you connect those designs. So you can see on my image there, um, I've got the template placed down um, and connecting to the previously stitched design. So that's going to help me with my placement. The other thing a printed template will do is help you stay aligned in the hoop. So when you print a template, most uh, software that you print from will print your actual size design, and it will also print these crosshairs to help make sure that you uh, know where the center of your design is and get can get lined up in the hoop. So, and I actually used our print and stick target paper to print on uh, for these templates. And the reason I use this is because when I'm at my embroidery machine and I'm working with the placement on the quilt, this adhesive template will actually stay in place, which is um, really nice. I don't have to deal with my paper moving around and not being lined up perfectly. So uh, let me head over and show you um, the template printed and just give you some couple of tips about dealing with the, the uh, template as well. So I'm going to bring up my uh, camera here. And so I've got my uh, template already printed and I printed this on print and stick target paper. So print and stick target paper um, is an adhesive template paper. It has a release paper. So when you print on it, um, it's got a nice smooth back and you want to print on the rough side. So however your printer prints, make sure that it prints on the rough side because on the back of the rough side is the adhesive um, side. Okay, so we print and then we've got this nice template. Now, one tip that I would give you is to um, actually trim this template down as close to the size as possible. Now, notice I've got these nice crosshairs. Um, and then notice this, this uh, part of my template too. These arrows actually are designating the top of the embroidery design. So when I place this down on my quilt, if I had it upside down, it wouldn't be super helpful. So I need to make sure I place my template down the uh, correct orientation. Okay, so now let's talk about trimming it. So now you could use your scissors. I'm gonna pull a little bit uh, off of here, but let me tell you, using your scissors for this is a, a bit of a challenge because you see there, your scissors stick to the uh, template paper. Now you could cut through all of the layers, which is what I did here, just to kind of give you an example. Um, in this template, I left the release paper on and I trimmed around it. Um, and this is uh, definitely quick and easy, but not my favorite way, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, so let me give you a tip. This is actually from Eileen. She does her templates uh, with her rotary cutter, which is a, lo a lot easier. So if you just peel off part of the template, and lightly place that down on your cutting mat, 
you can use your rotary cutter to go around and then uh, you're not having to worry about it sticking to uh, your scissors while you're cutting. Okay. And so then you'll just, you know, peel that away and keep going around until you're all done. So the nice thing about this is that when you're all done trimming, you're going to have a large piece of release paper to put this template back on. And then you don't have to line it up with this shape here. Okay. So that's uh, one of the things that I really love uh, to do. And I was actually going to peel this off and show you what I like, but you know, one of the hardest things about templates is actually separating uh, that adhesive paper from the release paper. So um, that is a, a definite challenge. So here we go. So now you're going to use this template over at the embroidery machine and you can see how now it's cut out. Okay. And I'm going to place that down and I'm going to line it up with my uh, stitch design at these points. Okay. Now the nice thing, like I said, about the big piece of paper is when you're not using this and you want to stick it to the release paper so it doesn't uh, get ripped or torn, you have to line that all up. But hey, let me give you one more tip here. So I am a huge fan of my digital cutter. And I actually did this today specifically uh, to show you guys. So I used my digital cutter and I have a couple of different ones to cut out my template. Look at this. And so I don't have to worry about it sticking to my mat or about um, only having that outside piece of the paper. So I created an outline in my uh, dime software and now I've got my template all cut out, okay? And so another thing that you can do, so if you actually uh, peel off your paper from uh, the backside, sometimes it'll help not curl so much, okay? So then there's our, our design. Now this is the actual size of my design that we're going to be putting on our quilt. So now look, I can put that right back down on my piece of paper and that is so much nicer, right? So this is a, a it's a low tack adhesive, but one thing I would do before you uh, are ready to quilt is maybe stick that on something that's a little bit uh, linty to kind of get some of the, um, the tack to go away. Um, and then that'll just make it easier to remove. But you can use one template throughout like nearly your your entire uh, uh, quilt that you're doing. So the adhesive is really good and sticks um, really well. Um, okay, so I was just reading some of the things that uh, we said, so that people are saying here and then uh, any questions you have. So I love Edge to Edge, especially after I bought time magnetic hoops. Yes, Sharon, thank you so much for your support. Taking a class next week to continue learning, that is fantastic. So I definitely agree with Sharon. You're gonna see me use my magnetic hoop when I get over to my embroidery machine. And uh, so you'll see how easy it is. It just makes it the, the repositioning so much nicer. Um, and then Betty here says, uh, do these quilting designs have uh, the ability to print on these? So uh, do these uh, quilting designs have the ability to print? Um, and so I'm not 100% sure, Betty, but what I normally do, any quilting design that I purchase or any embroidery design in general, um, I can print from my embroidery software and it actually prints actual size. If you don't have an embroidery software, uh, Dime actually has a free one called Embroidery Toolshed. It's completely free and it'll actually allow you to print actual size templates and you'll get a template exactly like I, you just saw um, me cut out with the uh, crosshair as you see underneath there um, and all of the, the little marks. In fact, um, that is an easy, the easiest way to do it. Some designs actually do come with a print file which you can um, print from, but you need to know if the designer is giving you a template that is actual size. Okay. So that's one tip that I could, could give you. The other thing I would say is that if you don't have the ability to print and you don't want to do it from a software, you can stitch an actual size template, just hoop a piece of stabilizer and stitch that template. That's another uh, easy way uh, to do, um, to create a template is to stitch it. And then you know you've got the exact size. So Patricia says she always marks uh, the template A and B for the Amelie Scott designs. That is a great tip. Um, 
too, Patricia, because since you've got two different designs, you don't want to accidentally use the wrong one. So I love that. Anytime you can make little notes for yourself to make the process easier, um, for sure. Um, and then, oh, I got to read this. That's actually pretty cool here. So look what Sharon says. She said a couple of craft companies have nonstick scissors with Teflon blades. So that's super cute. I need to they cool. I need to check that out. Um, and then uh, Lisa says, what size is the template paper? So it actually is an eight and a half by 11. So feeds into your regular um, printer at home. Um, and if the, the print and stick target paper, um, you can purchase that at our site, dzgns.com. It's eight and a half by 11 sheets and one package gets you 25 sheets um, in the, uh, the package. So um, so yes, so Joanne says, uh, genius idea on the, the digital cutter. Yes, uh, thank you, Joanne. I love my digital cutter. You know, I love it, love it, love it. So, and it can be useful in so many different ways. Um, oh, my friend Elizabeth Culver from uh, Spokane, Washington. Hi, Elizabeth. So good to see you. I've met Elizabeth um, in the past at a few events that I've done up there. Um, and so uh, the uh, I was looking to see if there are any other uh, comments here that we can talk about. But um, we've actually posted the links you can see there over to the um, embroidery tool shed, which is the free software. So feel free to grab that. It prints an actual size template, which is um, perfect for quilting with your embroidery machine. So and then uh, Maureen English says uh, when using the cutter, how uh, do you cut just the sticky part? of the template and not the bottom paper. So uh, Maureen, I'm not a digital cutter expert, but uh, for your brand of uh, digital cutter, look up something that's called a half cut or a kiss cut. That means that you only cut through the, the uh, top layer and you leave the release paper or the carrier sheet. It's called different things in a couple of different instances. So, so look up half cut or kiss cut and I, you'll see a million articles out there on uh, how to do those types of cut but it just definitely makes it easier. I just created the outline in my uh, software. One thing I noticed here, speaking of Sharon's tip about writing on your template, I cut off my, um, my arrows there. So I'm actually just gonna draw that back in. So when I get to the machine, I can uh, be reminded that this is the top of my template. And you'll see um, when I get over there how uh, important that is. So that's just a reminder for me. Okay, so, um, and then uh, Lisa says, which digital cutter do you use? So Lisa, I actually have uh, two different digital cutters. Um, I do have a Brother Scanning Cut and I also have a Silhouette Cameo. I love, love, love them both. And um, it's really a personal preference. They both cut, <laughs> which is what I need them to do. But um, it's just like a brand of a car. And so the one thing I would say about the uh, Scanning Cut is you generally get that from a dealer. And that means that you have dealer support. Um, in your local area, which is always the best choice for any brand. So, um, and I see a, a, some other people saying that they have the scan and cut too. And um, then Lisa says she's going to give that template paper a try. Nervous to do so. Don't be nervous. So you're about to see why it's uh, crucial. Okay, so while I'm here under my camera, let me bring my quilt over here before we go to the machine. So I just made a quilt sandwich out of our cheater quilt here. So let me flip this out. And then I'm going to give you a couple of tips um, before I go over to the machine. So quilting with your embroidery machine, you want to baste your quilt. Um, we like these basting pins. They are the uh, curved quilting uh, basting pins, but you can use safety pins if you like. But I really love these because they're easy to remove at the embroidery machine, which I'm going to show you when we get to the, the point of connecting our designs. Um, so make sure you baste. I have my three layers already sandwiched together. And I have, you can see I've got just a plain uh, backing, but my basting goes all the way through. And look at all this extra uh, batting that I have here. I'm gonna slide over to this edge. My camera is only so big of an area. So this is another tip that I wanna give you. Look at all this extra batting and backing here. The reason that we do this is when you get to the edge of your quilt and your design needs to quilt your entire quilt top, you've got to let your hoop hang off the edge a little bit or else you wouldn't be able to get the design all the way to the edge of your quilt. So if you place extra batting and backing around your entire quilt, it will um, be easier because your, your fabric will be filling the quilt, which is definitely what we need. So, and I'm going to quilt several of these designs right under the camera so that you can see the process. So basting, 
is definitely important um, to make sure that as you're moving this quilt around, you um, don't accidentally shift your layers there. Okay, and so now let me open this up one more uh, open. I'm trying to get to the center here. And so I actually marked the center of my quilt. Now I already started quilting. I've only quilted a few of these designs, I think three, but this has a very faint mark in it. So the first thing that I do, if you're not using a software for the planning, is find the center of your quilt and then put your first design there. That's the easiest way to get started because you wanna start in the center and work your way out to the edge. So this was my first design. This was the center of my, uh, the quilt here. So I basically hooped the center of my quilt. I used my template to place down on that center mark. You can see how you can see through this template so you can get it perfectly uh, lined up there. And so I used my template and then was put my hoop in that one spot. And then once I've got it hooped, I peel this off and I stitch that design and you can see there how it looks fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to the machine, but before I do, I'm gonna show you the connection point here under the camera first, and then we're gonna go over and put this on the embroidery machine. So, um, and uh, so I see Diana. Hey, Diana Mullins Atkinson. So thank you for joining. She's on our education team. So we always love having her here. Okay, so I'm ready to quilt this spot right here. And uh, you can see that my uh, tail there is where I have uh, ended that design. So I'm actually just gonna trim that off. Um, and I wanna connect that point with the next point of my design. So I'm gonna grab my template and um, <clears throat> this template, I'm actually just gonna stick it on my hand here a little bit just to make it a little less sticky and it makes it easier to remove. And so now what I'm doing is I wanna connect that point and you can see how I can see through my template to do so. And if you need to, um, you could certainly trim a little bit more off, which is maybe what I'll do here. So I'm just going to cut close to that. So then I can see that point there. And now I'm going to connect that point with my template and then place my template down on my quilt. Now, this particular design that I chose, it actually kind of nests um, inside of the uh, previous design. Um, you can see here um, that the um, how it kind of flows in uh, this way. And I actually wonder if this is a larger design. I think I printed a larger design than my previously stitched designs here because I can see some overlap. But you're going to start and finish with the same design. So I didn't notice that whenever I'd started earlier. Um, and so I'm connecting those points so then I can line up these designs here and make sure that it's stitched. So I'm going to show you how to check that at the embroidery machine. And so let's head over there and put our quilt um, on the embroidery machine. So I'm going to walk over to my machine here. And then um, I've already got my design loaded. And then you can see I've got the metal base on my hoop. Uh, for my hoop already on my embroidery machine. I'm using my snap hoop monster and then I'm going to place this down and my goal is to get that template in the hoop there and this de it definitely is a, uh, a different size uh, design here because it is uh, much larger it looks like so but we're going to go with it. Okay so I've got my uh, template and then that tells me where to put my hoop top. Okay, so what I usually do before I put the hoop uh, top on is I go ahead and kind of get that centered under my needle so that I know I'm like, you know, as close to the, the center of my sewing field. And then I can just uh, tug on my quilt to kind of get it where I want it to be, just like that. So I always double check. I just kind of pull on the backing fabric underneath just to make sure everything's smooth and I don't have any wrinkles or anything. And I've got my hoop guard, which is going to prevent my fabric from accidentally falling into the sewing field. So that's what that's there for. And I'm kind of close on that design. I've got my hoop all lined up here. And now let's uh, let's just check. So I'm going to lower the foot on my machine and I'm actually like pretty much spot on the center. But honestly, the center doesn't matter um, as much as making sure your points do. So I usually get to the center first and then I want to check to see if that point lines up. So depending on your design, 
you can advance to the first or the last stitch wherever you're trying to connect. And so if I advance one time to the first stitch over here, um, I can see that I'm off on that point. Even though I was centered in my hoop, that point is not connecting perfect. So what I'm going to do is just use my machine features to um, get to that point. And this is where it is um, really nice to have a design that is smaller than your hoop so that you can um, have a little bit of wiggle room there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to zero there um, and then, uh, or not zero, sorry, go back to the first stitch. <laughs> so, and then now I'm gonna just move my uh, quilt, just kind of pull on it and I can check that first point. Okay, so I like that. So I can see that right through the foot of my machine uh, for the point. And then the last thing that I am going to do is check to make sure that I'm straight in the hoop. So these points here, I've got um, aligned. I've got, I'm pretty much, you know, with my uh, zero here. And then I'm just um, above the zero on this side. So I'm going to um, lower that and get it right on my mark there. So I think that looks fantastic. So that's how I would line it up. Now, I'm sure that we have a um, some uh, lucky ladies out there that have embroidery machines that have um, a camera or a projector. And if you have those, you certainly can use those features to help you get these lined up. So then I'm going to peel the template off. So you can see it's kind of uh, pulled against my hair because it's uh, really sticky. So I'm just going to make sure that's all smooth and then we're ready to stitch. OK, so now in the embroidery machine, before I press go, I have thread. It's embroidery thread and I have a matching bobbin. So the bobbin is the same color and the same weight as my top thread. Now, the color doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but you do want to match the weights. So that'll help you balance the tension there. Oh, excuse me. Um, and then I'm going to uh, lower my foot. Just double check here that nothing's under the hoop. <coughs> excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. And then press go. And so let me make sure I didn't move there. It looks like I moved just slightly. And then here we go. And so it's starting at that point, and then it's going to uh, quilt that entire design. So let's see if we have any questions while we're watching that stitch. So hopefully it's not too close to the, to the camera there. And so uh, Noda Brat one says jog, jog, jog. Yes, that's exactly right. Noda, I totally agree. Um, she said she likes the start, start the uh, sticker on the base for sure. Um, and so I'm just scrolling back here uh, to watch. So um, Elizabeth's talking about her digital cutter. She said she has a silhouette. She loves their software. So exciting to use it with the Dime software. I totally agree. All of our software saves those cut files, so it makes it really easy um, to use. Oh, my friend Roz is in the house. She said, you tickle me also. So <laughs> I, uh, uh, Roz is a good friend. So thank you for joining, Roz. Um, and then Nancy says, uh, I'm late too. Don't worry about being late. You guys can watch the replay. And if you have questions, uh, let me know. And then notice this. Thanks for showing the matchup. I agree. Note, it's a question that we get probably number one question at some of our um, events too. So, and then Diane, uh, a regular embroidery thread works great. I totally agree with, uh, with Kirsten. It is, um, great for regular embroidery thread. You can also use a variegated embroidery thread if you want, metallic embroidery thread. Uh, so many different things. Um, Kathleen Queen says that what type of batting and thickness do you use? So um, uh, Kathleen, so I've used actually a, um, a variety of different things.
You know, I'm so proud of the Weightless Quilter. It is a game changer for quilting with your embroidery machine. Even sit down, long arms, love this product. Now it's time to load the quilt. My Weightless Quilter is assembled. It's on the floor and it's flex poles are extending above the machine bed. So I'm going to open up my quilt and I slide it underneath the foot. Now make sure your presser foot is raised. And then you can just let this weightless quilter do its job where it will just, well, you see in a minute, it's just gonna hold this quilt and glide and sway. It's wonderful. As the machine stitches, keep an eye on the quilt. You'll see that it in the back, it is lifting and it's moving with the hoop, which is exactly what we want. But this is the beauty of the quilt, uh, weightless quilter. It's just going to allow the machine to lay down the stitches without having any quilt drag. Now, when you receive your weightless quilter, you're going to have four corner brackets, and you will also have four floor bars. Of course, your floor bars are gonna be a lot longer than mine. You'll find a bag of all these different items. And in there, you're going to find four fabric clamps. And to open them, you just put your fingers inside that cavity and then press with your thumb or palm. You'll also find two bags of pre-cut adhesive felt, paper back, so you just remove the piece of paper on each one and apply that to your flex poles. So you just remove that adhesive, place it on the end, and then just wrap it around the flex pole. Now your flex poles come in two diameters. This is the thicker one. It also has a skinny one. You'll have four of the thick and four of the thin. The thicker ones are sturdier than the thin ones. The thin ones obviously have more flexibility. And we'll talk about that in a minute. These flex poles go into your corner bracket like so. That felt gives them a nice snug fit. And then on the other end of the flex pole is where you attach your fabric clamp. And that there are two different holes on the fabric clamp, a skinny one and a large one to accommodate the two different poles. Also in your baggie, you're going to find some finger cots, these little rubber fingers, and you'll position them over the orange grips on each fabric clamp. And that just gives you a smoother, more delicate surface that will touch your quilt sandwich. So I just thought that this was a nice addition to add to the weightless quilter so that those little orange pads, they're kind of rough. And so they don't have to touch your fabric. They're protected by those finger cuts. So once you have all of that set up, well, what you're really gonna do first is attach your floor bars to your corner brackets. And they go in this fashion. The two corner brackets that will be positioned behind the machine, you want the holes positioning away from the machine so that when you add your flex pole, it's pointing away from the machine. In the front of the machine on the left-hand side, you'll have the, the corner bracket positioned in the opposite direction so that now, the um, flex pole will be positioned away from the machine. So as you can see, it's spanning away from the machine, both in the back and the front. Of course, your floor bars are gonna be larger. They're going to be you know, on the floor and surrounding the um, machine or table, the, your sewing machine furniture. Now, as you attach your quilt and all your flex poles, if you find that you have any lift at all, you can add another floor bar here to create a weight, or you can add a bag of beans or a bean bag in this area if you have any lifting. It happens very rarely. And frankly, when I'm quilting, I pay attention to what's happening up on the hoop. Once my weightless quilter is on the floor, I don't pay any more attention to it. Hey guys, 
thank you for your patience. So we actually are going to be talking about the weightless quilter, um, but my internet dropped out. And so I just had to rejoin. So thank you for being patient. So we were um, answering some questions about the edge to edge quilting. So my design actually finished. So I'll head back over there before I go in to this next part and we'll connect one more design since I'm not sure like where it all fell apart. Um, but uh, there were some questions just to make sure. So there were some questions about thread options. So thread, you can use any thread for quilting that you can run in your embroidery machine. Um, and so matching the weight on top and bottom is really one of the most important things because the matching weight of thread will balance your stitches a, a bit better. Um, generally when we're embroidering, we're using a bobbin that is an embroidery weight bobbin, which is usually like 60 or 70 weight, which is thinner. And so using your regular embroidery weight thread, like the 40 weight or a sewing uh, weight thread, then it's going to help balance those stitches. So um, I, uh, I talked about that. Not sure how much you guys heard of that. Um, and then I think the other thing that I answered too was batting. So batting really is a personal choice. I've used a variety of different types of batting, um, a wool batting. I've used one that's kind of a lofty um, batting that's lightweight. I've used a wool cotton blend. I've used a polyester cotton blend. Um, so it's really up to you uh, what you prefer for quilting on your embroidery machine. One thing that you can do uh, just to kind of check to make sure that your hoop is going to hold it because if it's super thick, um, then uh, it, you know your you want your magnetic hoop to hold it in place. So and if it's uh, thick, then it may not hold it snugly. So let me show you what we do here at Dime. So I've got this uh, quilt sandwich here that has already been quilted with our with my embroidery machine. You can see how great that is. The back looks gorgeous too, right? I always get that question there. Um, but do the hoop test. If you're wondering if your batting is uh, too thick um, for your hoop to hold it nice and snug, which let me tell you, you can actually go thicker than you thought. Do what we call the hoop test where you attach your magnetic hoop. You can see I've got it front and back. And then I'm holding up by the uh, actual weight of the quilt and not holding the hoop. And you can see that my hoop is staying in place. So I'm trying to go the opposite direction. The camera is <laughs> opposite. But holding this, my hoop is staying in place. So I know that this uh, uh, quilt sandwich here is going to be supported when I get to the embroidery machine. So that's what you want to check on. That's the most important for the back, uh, for the weight. Um, and then Joanne Bacos says, welcome back, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was actually nice. We had that video planned, but I was going to uh, talk about it a little bit later um, so you would know what was coming. But that's actually how we support the weight of the quilt. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, in just a bit. But now I'm going to head back over to my machine. The design finished while I was um, uh, dealing with um, uh, lack of internet. And so now we're ready to connect another one. So it's perfect. So I'm going to show you how to do that connection. So let me head over uh, to that machine. And because I dropped out, I have to share that, uh, that screen. So I'll head over there and do that now. So you get to see that my background without me um, in it. <laughs> and so let me get everything booted up here um, and grab my cord. Maybe we're going to talk about something else because this uh, just dropped off too. So Hang on one sec, guys. Thank you so much for your patience. And get that turned back on. Okay, so while that's turning back on, um, let's uh, just answer some other questions here that we have. So I'll give that just a minute. Um, so I was showing you the connecting on the uh, machine so that you could um, see how the points connected. And so if you guys have questions about that, then let me know. So while that the computer is booting up, we'll try that again one more time. Um, and if it doesn't do it this time, then we'll just call it uh, good. So you guys don't have to watch all that. But um, but Judith says she has the weightless quilter. So Judith, have you used the weightless quilter? Um, and if so, tell us uh, in the chat what you think. It is an impressive tool to make sure that you've got the weight of your quilt supported and so that you can um, uh, not have to worry about quilt drag because quilt drag can actually cause issues with your stitch out for sure. So and then Donna Hall uh, um, says that or, or Noda sorry so Noda Bratt says she haven't set up the weightless quilter yet so get it out of the box it's actually really simple you saw Eileen show you that on the the video there so it just it's really simple and it makes a huge 
huge difference when you're doing large quilts for sure. Um, and then uh, Kirsten says that the whitelist quilt is very helpful with quilting with your embroidery machine. And I totally agree. Um, and so the Wayless Quilter, um, I'll show you some uh, images here and then I'll uh, double check on that in just a minute. Um, but the Wayless Quilter, the reason that we showed you this in conjunction with quilting with your embroidery machine is that it actually is a tool that's going to prevent quilt drag. So quilt drag is when your embroidery uh, machine is moving and the quilt is dragging across the, um, the edge of the table and your machine's having to move all that around. And it can actually cause your hoop to pop out of place, which you don't want uh, to do because then it causes a stitch out issue. So that's what the weightless quilter does is it supports that um, uh, quilt so you don't have any issues. So just to show you some more images. So I know you saw some of this in the video, but it does have these flexible poles and the flexible poles allow it to move um, uh, and hold the quilt, but then the machine uh, can move freely. And then you can see here how it's uh, released and it is uh, flexed. Um, when it's close, but then as the machine moves to the right edge, as you move the quilt to the right edge of the quilt, um, that pole extends out so that it's still supporting the quilt. Um, this is actually a great image because it is the um, perfect example of a small workspace. So a small workspace is something that a lot of us deal with. And you can see on this image here that it is... Um, is showing the weightless quilter still supporting the uh, quilt, even though you're really close to that window and the wall there, which is actually very important uh, for um, doing the quilting with your embroidery machine. And uh, here you can see that as we move down the quilt, it's still doing what it needs to do. And then here I just have some pictures just to kind of show you a variety of different setups. So we've got the queen size uh, quilt here. Um, this is uh, Christine Connor of Amelie Scott Designs using it with her sewing cabinet. And as you can see, a variety of different machines too. Like no matter which machine you have, um, you can use the weightless quilter. So look at, this is my multi-needle embroidery machine and look how it's holding the quilt up. Now, can you imagine like if you're doing uh, things on a multi-machine needle that are not just a quilt, but maybe a large blanket or drapes or tablecloths, you can use the weightless quilter for those things as well. Um, and here we are with a sit down a quilter. And so not just embroidery, you can also use it if you're doing free motion with your regular sewing machine or with your uh, your uh, sit down quilter. Now, before I get to this, now the mega giveaway, that's actually coming up. Before I get to that, let me uh, just try one more time and see if that machine is up and you guys can see it. We'll connect one more design and, and then we'll, we'll uh, see if we have, have any other questions there. Um, so let me head over there. It looks like it is showing. Okay, perfect. So now this design finished, and then I'm going to take my template and we're going to do the same thing again, basically. So what I normally do, just take your embroidery hoop off. If the hoop is large enough, you can actually hang it over the edge of uh, the head of the machine. But then I usually shift my quilt so that I've got some of that uh, empty space here in um, where I know I need to place my hoop. And you can see this pin needs to come off. So this is why we like using these because I can do this right at the embroidery machine and uh, place that out of the way. And then now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to connect those points with the template. Okay. And then the, my template shows uh, where the design's going to go. Make sure everything's smooth under my template. And then I can put that right under my needle. That's my starting point. Now it's not 100% uh, my... Uh, where I'm going to leave it, but it's a good starting point because then I know where to put my hoop and I don't have to worry about my machine saying that you're out of the hooping area. How many times have we heard that? <laughs> right? So then I just smooth everything out, double check my back. I just pull on the backing fabric by itself and make sure that everything's smooth. You don't want to have a wrinkle, all your hard work. Okay. So everything's lined up. Now let's do that again. I'm going to check my starting point. So um, head up to the top there. And again, that's not perfect the first time, first try. So, and if you lower your foot, you can kind of see through there and get that right into position. So, and I kind of like that. Okay. And then I'm going to lift my foot and peel off. Well, actually, before we peel off our template, let's just double check. So I'm pretty spot on here. Now here, I'm actually 
at the one mark and the zero mark on my centering guide. So before I take a stitch, I want to adjust my quilt so that I stay straight in the quilt. Also use your seams on your quilt to help you with that as well. So there we go. Well, then now since I've moved that, you want to make sure you double check, make sure you're still lined up with that point there. There we go. I'm much more happy with that. And so then now let's do that and take that template off. And again, you can see how it pulled here against my top. So I'm just pulling just the top just to kind of smooth that out so it's nice and smooth. That's the nice thing about the magnetic hoop is I can make those minute adjustments right here under the needle. And so, and I'm like pretty happy with that. So let's do that one more time. And so I've got my uh, design set ready to go, peel that off. Now, again, I don't know if you heard me whenever if I disconnected or not, but if you have some uh, machine features that are um, help you with alignment, then by all means use those. So while we're over here, while that's stitching, uh, let's just see what other uh, comments um, that we have. And so, and uh, this was while in somebody, so um, let's see what we got here. And so TJ Tech, it looks like. So Ashley, I recently had an endless quilting on a twin size quilt. And I was using a 10 by 16 hoop on the weightless quilter, but had problems with the quilt slipping in the hoop. So um, just may, I would say start with that hoop test that I just showed you and make sure that your hoop is holding snug. If it is, then I would say the next thing to check for is do a trace around your um, hoop of your design and then while it's tracing the field the sewing field make sure that you don't see any areas that it is uh tugging on the quilt because when you're down at the bottom of the quilt you don't necessarily have to have the um, ends of the quilt connected to the weightless quilter so just make sure you're not getting that uh that tension there and then Clara Brown says, uh, do you need to move the weightless quilter around as you quilt? And the answer to that is no. You're going to set the weightless quilter up. Um, basically, center the weightless quilter around the hoop of your machine. So you're not going to center the weightless quilter on the machine. It's really the area that's under the hoop. So, And you don't have to move it once you, you get it all um, up. And then, uh, oh, so then I see your next comment here, that it was while you're in the center of the quilt. So, um, so yeah, just, I would still double check that tension. So that tells me you weren't at the edge, but just double check your, the tension, do that trace and see if you've got um, any issues with it, uh, pulling in certain points. So, and then, uh, Lark says, I definitely need to buy a weightless quilter. My current and very old device only has two clamps and causes me to adjust my quilt many times. So, oh yes, definitely Lark. So the weightless quilter is very well received. And also it's, um, it's a pretty, um, convenient item to store. It's uh, you can break it all down, doesn't require any tools. So it makes it really easy. I just prop it up behind a door in my sewing room. And then uh, Claudia says, what's the metal piece on the right side of the hoop? So Claudia, that's our hoop guard. Um, hoop guard is a um, attachment to your snap hoop. You can see the little picture there on the screen and it's going to prevent your items from falling into the sewing field. So if you've got a, a quilt sandwich rolled into the throat of the machine, it's just going to make it, you know, much easier, much nicer um, and not have to worry about any issues if you kind of step away. Now, you can see this design stitches like super quickly. Um, I'll just line up one more um, and then uh, um, but we won't stitch it. Now, um, I probably would go down. We're working from the center out. So um, I'm going to do this uh, design here now for for this. Um, do the same thing, but I want to make a point here. This is one of the reasons why um, I wanted to get uh, all the way to the edge. But notice when I get to the edge here, so our design to quilt all the way to the edge, I mean, it's like right up to the edge. So um, get your design into their center and then put your hoop down. And so now look at my hoop here. So you can see that I've got uh, extra um, batting all here, but it's actually filling my hoop because my design needs to go to the edge. And so I can't put that edge of my quilt under the hoop or else it would not be able to get all the way to the edge. So that's a good reason to have that batting and backing. So um, position that, check your alignment in your hoop, use your seams, use that point to get everything lined up. So hopefully those uh, tips were helpful to get you guys going. And I also hope that it um, gives you a little 
um, less uh, that you're not uh, as intimidated either. So I see one comment that says uh, no audio. So is everybody still okay on the uh, audio? And so um, then uh, I was just looking for some of the other questions. How far away can uh, can you have a large table if you have a large table? And so here we've got how far away can it be? You have a large table. Uh, the poles that uh, come with the weightless quilter is actually really, um, um, there, there's two short ones and two long ones. So even if you have a large table, it's still gonna stick out enough past uh, that table for your, uh, your setup, so. Um, and then uh, Rita Reiki, you had to leave and you miss a lot and you watch the replay. Thank you so much. So we're glad. And then thank you guys comments. I see the comments that you can hear. I just saw that one comment with the no audio. So I was a little nervous there that we had another glitch. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, you know, type them in the chat and then I'll try to answer before we go. But um, let me go over um, the giveaway. So um we uh all about quilting so hopefully you guys learned a ton sorry for the mishap so you can't um do things when the internet drops out and so we depend on that so much right um okay so if you haven't heard dime is doing a huge giveaway so our mega giveaway is a huge bundle of dime product it's over thirty two hundred dollars worth of items and i want to share with you what all is in this giveaway so the giveaway is on may the 5th you can enter as many times as you want up until may 5th so once a day enter every day once a day and then as many times well i guess we only have a few more days left so um but enter every day so you can um, increase your chances to to win and so the mega giveaway includes some phenomenal dime product. So let's uh, take a look at what's included. So you're going to get in this bundle, one lucky winner that wins the dime mega giveaway is going to get three pieces of dime software. That's our word art and stitches, our patch and applique maker software and our my block piecer. So those are, um, amazing pieces of software. So you guys are going to love that. I can't wait to see who gets all these goodies. Um, Just Jackets design collection. That's a design collection by Joanne Banco and she's here um, in the house. So um, that collection is uh, created by Joanne and it's a gorgeous applique collection. We have our vintage clutch collection, which uses specialty threads. We also have our Just Earrings freestanding lace earrings created by your very own Eileen Roach. And so those are so much fun. In fact, I'm wearing a pair today. Um, and also in this mega giveaway, you're going to get a free tutoring session with one of our dime education team members. That's a 30 minute tutoring session on the software that you won. So make sure um, that you uh, sign up for that lesson if you win this giveaway. Um, now, you're also going to get the Sally Tomato Pressing Station. This is a, a really unique set of boards that we worked with Jessica Barrera to create. Um, so if you like to make bags, the Sally Tomato Pressing Station is a great tool for you. Um, it also includes the Stitch Ripper, also a great tool we don't like to admit, but sometimes we have to undo our hard work. Um, the hoop guard. So you saw me using the regular hoop guard. It's actually coming with the jumbo hoop guard. So if you're using a six by 10 or larger hoop, the jumbo hoop guard makes a longer barrier against the edge there. So that's a phenomenal tool. You're also going to get the spray tent, which is a tabletop area that you can spray your spray adhesive and not have to keep a spray box um, on hand. So the spray tent, one of my favorite tools um, to have uh, because it folds up and I just tuck it in a drawer. We're also going to give you some of our steady stitch bobbins. Love our, uh, our pre-wounds, makes life so much easier. You're going to get three um, color assortments of our poly patch twill that we use to make patches and the companion thread. So that is a ton of thread. So that's 24 spools of thread 
And as if that weren't enough, we're going to give you three sets of our fine line thread. This is a 60 weight thread. And that 60 weight thread is great for micro lettering. Um, it's also good for quilting. It makes like a subtle effect on your quilt. Um, but you can use it for a variety of different things. It's great for using it in the bobbin when you need to make a matching color on your embroidery designs. Um, so great for all those things. And you may have not known, but Dime actually has some spools of 5,000 meter threads of our um, thread line, our exquisite thread line. And you're going to get two of those spools in this giveaway. We're also giving you our two latest colors of King Star Metallic, the purple and the orange. And look at all these color play sets. So you're going to get every color play set. Um, the color play is one spool of variegated thread and it's four companion colors. So the four colors of regular embroidery thread that match. So you're getting a ton of thread in this set and a ton of our stabilizer. We all know stabilizer is the foundation of our embroidery. We could not do embroidery without stabilizer. So you're going to get all of these rolls of stabilizer in that um, that giveaway. So I just love that. I cannot wait to see who wins. What do you guys think about the mega giveaway? It's May the 5th. Don't forget, May the 5th. So before I go on to the on the house, we um, our free design that we have for today, I was just going to read to see uh, what questions we had um, before we go. So uh, uh, Tana says, uh, how do I print out the design on the print stick target paper? So you need an embroidery software to do that. If you don't have an embroidery software, our free embroidery tool shed will allow you to print. The location to get that free um, embroidery tool shed is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. It will make sure to print actual size for you, which is crucial so that you make sure your design is lined up. And then um, Becky, Be Becky Munn says, do you have to tape down the edge of the quilt top so the presser foot doesn't go under it while stitching? If your design stitches off of the quilt top, then I normally watch. And as it runs off and on, I use like a skewer, just like a skewer that you would put on the, the grill um, and use that to just hold down the edge of my quilt. If you are concerned that you may not catch it, then yes, um, instead of tape, what I would use is a uh, water soluble adhesive stabilizer because it acts as tape, but if you stitch through it, then anytime your quilt is washed, it'll just dissolve. So um, that might be an easier way. If you're using tape, use one that'll tear out of your stitches really, uh, really easy. Um, so, and then um, how, how do I print the paper? We already said that. And then any other questions before we go? So let's see, Carla Miller says, uh, what's the status on the magnetic hoop for Burnett B79 and what size will the hoop be? So I don't have the information on um, exactly when that will be ready, Carla, but I know that they are working on that. Um, and so hopefully you'll see that soon. So if we've got any other Burnett users out there, watch for those uh, hoops. So, and everybody's saying thanks and loved it, learned a lot. So thank you guys. We're not done just yet. We have our free design and then I will let you uh, go. So our free design. Every week we give away a design that we call On the House. So it is On the House from us here at Dime. And these designs are created and digitized very well. And we're trying to give you a variety of techniques and things to use with these designs. And we love it if you would share your project you made with these designs over at, um, uh, over uh, on our Facebook page or actually any uh, page, just use the tag um, Dime Sew Along on the house or Exquisite Thread. So if you tag it with those uh, tags, then we'll get to it. And we love to share the pictures each week. So the free designs are at dzgns.com. And if you uh, search free designs, they will pop up. So now each week we like to show you what everyone's been creating with their design. And this week we have uh, this design here. This was the butterfly from last week. And Reen Wilcoxon of Embroidery Gardens actually created this. And guys, she stitched it on wood. Yes, wood. I love that. So if you want to see how she did this stitch out, so check out um, our uh, Facebook page. She tagged us in there. You can also check out her Facebook page, Embroidery Gardens, um, or our Facebook Inspiration Dime software users. So, and she kind of gives the details of how she stitched on the wood. So I thought that was super cool. Um, and so I 
definitely want to see your designs next week. So make sure you post what you've made with any of our on the house designs. And here is the new one for this week. So we have this really cute bloom design, perfect for spring. And it's going to teach you a couple of different techniques. This particular design, we're giving you a project to go along with it. It actually is a table mat that's a 12 by 10 size. And the design itself, the bloom design, is a 5 by 7. And it shows you how to use mylar. There's mylar in one of the cute little butterflies. And there's also applique in this design in that beautiful run stitch design. Now, to create the table mat, it's super easy. You're going to stitch the bloom design first and then trim away the excess a quarter inch from around that uh, stitching mark. And then you're going to stitch the vertical sashing or the vertical border. Sorry, the vertical border will stitch. Now, um, Eileen created this project and she quilted this free motion, um, but you could certainly quilt that with your embroidery machine. Perfect for what we were talking about today. And um, then you're going to trim those borders two and a half by eight, and they'll match the height of your bloom block. So once you've done that, you're going to add your vertical sashing to either ends of the bloom block and then attach that border to the sashing. And then you're going to repeat that for the other side, press it all open, and then trim away any excess to make that a nice uh, straight edge there. Then you're going to repeat the same thing for the horizontal borders as well. So you're going to do your sashing and then do that horizontal border. Then you'll do that backing and uh, turn it inside out and press it all nice and flat. So how cute is that? So make sure you grab your free on the house designs. Also, if you stitch a project using it, please share it on social media and use the hash hashtags that I mentioned. So dime so along um, on the house or exquisite thread. So that's going to help us find it. And we love to see what you're doing and share with everyone. So Thanks, guys, for your patience today with the technology issues, but we got it back and got it moving. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. I hope you learned a little something about quilting. I also hope that you're um, entering to uh, that uh, for that mega giveaway on May the 5th is the day we're going to announce the winter winner, not winter winner. And use that on the house design. So until next week with Between Friends, guys, you'll actually have Eileen back and maybe I'll see you again in the coming week. So thank you so much for attending and all your questions. Um, take care. We'll see you next time.